Hey, what's up? Chill here from Code and Quick Tips. And in today's video, you will learn how to split up your Slick 2D game into different scenes. Or to be more detailed, right now we um, include all our game code in one single class, and that can get very messy. And to yeah, somehow prevent this, we will um, try to split up our game into different parts, for example, a menu, an actual game part, or a pause menu. And through this, we can achieve a way better structure in the game. So, as you can see here, right now we got only a main class, which calls our game class. And inside of that game class, all our game code happens. And as I mentioned right now, it can be really tricky to put everything into one class, especially if we want um, to run, for example, only one um, part of your game at a time. So, um, normally you won't run your actual game if you run your main menu. And to prevent this, um, we will use um, different classes for different p um, parts of our game, and all those classes will be a scene. Um, so, for example, scene 1 could be the menu, scene 2 the game, and scene 3 could be the credits page, or something like that. And also, scenes um, are inherit from one um, scenes over some, and every scenes um, should be able to be rendered, be updated, be edited as a normal, as our yeah normal game scenes, so that we can work with it um, like a no normal slick game. And over yeah, to make it a bit more comfortable to work with it, we should also include a method to pause the scenes so. It won't take input, but uh, it is still rendered to make it um, invisible or to turn it off, so it won't take input and it won't be rendered. And yeah, that's the most common part we will need um, and state in which our scenes is rendered as a normal. Um, yeah, it's rendered like a normal game or like the thing um, that we know out from our normal game class. So, but how can we call all those render methods and all those update methods without messing up our actual game scenes um, with a lot of code in which we manage all those other scenes? To do this, um, I use a class called Scenes Manager, where I just have um, lists with all scenes in it, and through that we can achieve that our game will only have one scenes manager that will then manage all the scenes that we use and the scenes manager will be able to actually add scenes, uh, add a scenes to our game or delete a scenes or find a specific scenes by name, scene by name. Through this we can achieve that every scenes can um, somehow interact with the other ones and we can for example say if the player hits the escape key we want to push the um, pause many scenes into the scenes manager and we want to pause our actually game scenes. Through that system we only have to do one time a bit of work and after that we yeah, can very easily uh, structure our game into different parts and that makes working much easier I think. So to come to our actual code we will first take a look at the uh, um, basic scenes from which all other ones will um, inherit. So I have prepared the code for this tutorial because it would be really a lot to write all this and I will put the whole project into the description so don't worry about um, retyping all this or just look at the video and then you can build up your own system because to be honest I don't know if this is um, for example, a very good system, maybe there are better ones or worse ones, I don't know, so it works for me and I wanted to share it with you. To start off, as I mentioned, we got um, different states for our scenes, so we got the on state, then our scenes will be um, completely rendered and completely updated. We got a free state, and that we will only render the scenes and we won't update it anymore. 
through this we can achieve, for example, if we call a pause menu, the game is frozen in the background from the pause menu. And that's a very nice effect. And we also have the state invisible and said we won't see the scenes and it won't be updated. Uh, we also get an um, integer, it's called prior, and you may notice that I implement here comparable scenes. If you don't know what that does, it basically gives us, uh, yeah, through that, through that we basically can compare different objects in a list, so for example in an error list or in a linked list, and through this we can sort the list and what this should do later on, it will help us to tell the code or to tell in the code or to tell the level manager which scene should be um, rendered first. Through this we can achieve that one scene is rendered over another scene or it's rendered behind another scene. You will see this later on or yeah I will show it to you. We got this in prior and down here we got the method compared to this method um, is um, comes from sys implements and it's called from a linked list or an array list if we call the compare method. Through this we can say if a um, um, scene should be rendered on top of another or beneath another scene. Don't worry too much about this, it's only about sorting our scenes so that we can actually render um, in, in the foreground or in the background. We also got the method set state to set the state so we can um, freeze the scenes while it's running. Back to the top, we got the constructor. In this, we will create. Oh, here we have also an image, and if you wonder, if you wonder, this image will save up the last rendered image from the scenes if we freeze it. Through this, we can save a lot of um, render power or yeah, if we freeze the scenes, and if we freeze the scenes, it actually won't take, or qu uh, won't take too much power. And through this, we can actually um, save a lot power from the user if we pause and scenes. To the constructor, we just set the default state to on because our scenes should run normal, and we also create a new image that our scenes is. Don't worry too much about that, you will notice later on for what we will need set. The image will have the size of our window later on. So you must reset that to your window size. We got those three methods. Um, those will be important in the actual real scenes that inherit from this one. There's a custom render, custom, custom update and the init method. All these methods will be called um, from the or will be called every update and every render call and through this we can later on just work with it like our normal game. Yeah. That's the render method. This method will be called directly by the um, by the game ma by the scenes manager. And here we can see we only render anything if the state is um, not invisible. So if the scene is scene is visible, we will render something. If the scene is, scene is on, we will just call the custom render because then we just want to render. And here comes the tricky part with the uh, um, state freeze next and the state freeze. If the state is set to freeze next, the um, graphics of the scene's image that we have created on the top are, cr are cleared and then we call the custom render update and we will give the graphics from the scenes image to the custom render, through that we will render on the, on the scenes image and then we set the state to freeze. In all later freezed um, frames we will only render the image that we have created here. Through that we can save the um, power the computer will need if he must render, if the computer must render every image in the custom render call a new and Yes, that will save up a lot of calculation power. Here in the update method, it's quite simple. We will only update our scenes 
or we will only cause a custom update of our scenes if the state of the scenes is on. In every other case we won't update and through that the scenes won't get for example user input. Yeah and as I mentioned before we got a um, method to set the priority here to basically set if the image is rendered in the forcer background. We also got the method um, public string to string. This will return the name of the scenes and will be later on used in the scenes manager. Yeah. Then, because I talked about a lot about the scenes manager, we can take a look about the, to the scenes manager. It has basically a list of scenes and uh, it saves in game container. We will need it later on for the init methods. And scenes manager is created with a game container and it just creates a new array list for all the scenes. Here in the next step we can see the add scenes method which will add a new scenes. It will just add the scenes to the scenes list that we want to add and it will in the scenes we will need we'll, um, sorry we need to try and catch here because uh, and it can fail sometimes and then we just catch the slick error. After that we use the collections.sort method. That's where the priorities come into yeah, come into our system. Here the new added scenes will just be sorted into the error list so that all scenes get rendered correctly. We can also remove a scenes by the scenes object that we want to remove uh, that we want to remove and we will also be able to remove a scenes by and string that we give to our manager and through that we are way more yeah we can way better remove scenes and handle with them. So we will search the right scenes with the right name and then remove it. We will all we have also the render method of the scenes manager with is uh, which is called in every render call and this will only call all the um, render methods of all the separate scenes, scenes. Um, the same with the update method and here are some additional uh, additional methods so we can actually get a scenes by and string of the scenes so we can get a scenes by name and we can resort the scenes if we, for example, reset a priority, we will resort it and through that everything will be rendered correctly. The last method is a clear method with, um, which will just remove all scenes. Who? that was a lot, so now let's get into the game class in which we have done everything previously and that we will only have a public static scenes manager um, we will init it, init it with a game container and we will call the update and render method of the render manager in every render and update call. Through that um, all render and update methods of every single scenes will be called. At the start or in the init method we will add a new scenes called scenes1 to the scenes manager. And here comes the yeah, quite comfortable part because right now you heard um, 30 minutes just talking about um, the scenes manager and the scenes and you may think hey that's way too complicated for my game but if we now take a look at our scenes one we can see that we only need to write extend scenes call the super in the constructor and set a priority for our scenes then we can just um, use a custom render, custom, uh, custom update, and in a method, as we are, yeah, as we are used in our normal game scenes, and that's very good because here we all we have the exactly same structure as in our slick basic game, in every single scenes of our game, and we also return a name. Let's take a look at the render method. It only renders a red box. That's nothing special. But in the actually update method, there's a um, call to the game, to the static manager, which we can get out of the game. And there we call add scenes. If we press the space key, then we add a new scenes called scenes2. 
and that's a good thing about the scenes manager. We can just um, add and remove scenes all the time in every update method. So we add a new scenes and if we take a look at scenes 2, it has the same structure as scenes 1. It only extends from the scenes and got an update, an update and render and an init method. In this scenes we will render a moving blue rectangle and here we can see some cool things. Here we can reset the priority to 2 or minus 2 and because scenes 1 has a priority 1, scenes 2 will be rendered on top of scenes 1 if the priority is higher and if we resort the um, list and the scenes will be rendered under the first scenes if we then set the priority to something lower than 1, for example minus 2. Oh, here's an error. <laughs> so, and here another thing, if we hit the left um, left error on the keyboard, we will remove that scenes. So our scenes can basically remove itself. And if we ha hit the right key, the scenes will be frozen, so it will only be rendered and not be updated. If we take a look at all this, you can see the red scene, the red box from scenes 1, that we render here. Uh, there we go. The red box is just um, rendered as we are used to in our normal. Yeah, as we are used to. And if I now hit the space key, a moving blue box will be added. Yeah. And if I hit the down key, the box will be rendered below the red box. If I hit the up key again, it's rendered on top of it. That's quite good. If I hit the left key, it's removed. I can add another scenes, it just moves around. And I can also, as mentioned before, hit the right key to freeze it. We can also add multiple scenes. So now we got two types, um, two objects of the um, second scenes. We can add a third and a fourth. And we can remove them. Yeah, that's quite a lot, but I will put the project with all the comments into the description. So feel free to take a look. And I hope this video was not too much for one video, but I think it's just a very comfortable way to structure your game. Yeah, you would help me a lot if you could leave me a comment with feedback or rate the video. And if you have not already, you would also help me a lot if you could su subscribe to my channel. That's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.